Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Today I have quite the special object. It's this pill camera, or also called capsule endoscopy. It's basically a small camera with a battery inside and an RF transmitter of some kind. And if you want to know what's going on inside of you, you will yeah, put this down your throat and get it out of the backside a few hours later. And while it's inside of you, it will yeah, record or transmit the images. I got this as a donation from Envy or Moritz. Best greetings to him. I will link down his channel in the description. And it's used, but it was cleaned. If you know what I mean. It's okay. Um, as I don't know how this will work out and if it's even possible to get it out without destroying it, we want to take a look inside, of course, and maybe even power it on via external power and see if we can see anything, if we can see like a microcontroller with the firmware, if we can take a look at the firmware even maybe, or if it is quite analog inside, I'm not sure. Also, if the RF transmission is like very short range and you have like some um, electrodes on your body to receive it or if it's really like transmitting further away. I saw that there are some cameras even with Bluetooth, which I'm not so sure if it goes outside of your body. Um, let's just see how it goes. Right now we can see four LEDs. And I think this extra part here is an antenna or maybe like a sensor. And what I noticed is that this thing has a magnet inside. Not so sure how it is used. I saw that some of these cameras are turned on by a magnet on the outside or activated that way. But if, it's, if it has a magnet all around itself, I'm not so sure if this would work because I mean it's totally enclosed and somehow they need to be able to enable it. But first I would just try to cut here at the top and remove the yeah basically dome at the front. And yeah, let's see what what it will look like. So let's just Try to feel how good we can get inside this way. It feels like it's opening a little bit already that way. It's making some crackling noise. So maybe if we go around a bit. But I mean, it has to be glued quite, quite a lot to not um, get wet when it's inside of your body. So far, it does not look so good to be open that way. So yeah, next trick would be a plier to just cut in the stone to maybe relieve its core basically. Yeah, that looks good. So now we can pry it open and of course it still looks the same. And Let's zoom in a bit more. So this extra LED type thing really looks like um, light detection. Uh, so maybe this will turn on the LEDs if needed. Or that way it is activated because if it is maybe inside of an enclosure which is dark all the time and you open this back out open 
yeah, you open this back and then it sees light, it will activate that way because this is definitely a one-time use product. Let's try to get out the um, inside as well. We, we can see here some kind of um, flex cable, so I will try to not poke around that area. And yeah, I can feel it. It wants to come out a bit. So yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we can see a big flex cable all around. Let's also take a look inside this pill, but it's just there. And yeah, this flex cable really seems to be the antenna. Okay, so it's two way, some special antenna. Ah, okay, it is one antenna that is just made to be long enough all around. Oh, and nice. We can see a microcontroller already. Oh, very nice. That's a Texas Instrument CC1310, which is just basically a normal microcontroller. And if it's not locked, we even can read out the firmware. This is interesting, definitely. We can see here like two batteries. And I think this big round part here at the top is the magnet because it also tries to be attached to the batteries. That's very interesting. And somewhere needs to be the camera itself also connected. Ah, maybe this magnet thing is the camera then. Let's try to lift off this PCB with the LEDs even more. But it seems to be glued or melted in in some way. Ah, it's like a press fit. Like so, we should be able to Open it further up. Yeah, that looks good. And then we maybe should be able to remove the plastic completely. And there I can see another PCB. But it seems to be glued in some kind. Yeah, that could work out. I'm lifting the plastic alone, it would be a shame if anything breaks here. Yeah, it seems that there's sensor that to remove right now, that's not so good. Yeah, it's uh, not the sensor, it's the, the lens that gets removed now if I pull it further away. So, let's try it anyway to really know what is inside. Okay. Like so, let's try to lift it away. And yeah, so we can see the lens itself is removed. And here we still have the image sensor. And it looks like it is fully intact. Let's just keep it that way for now. And also try to lift off this PCB again. Okay, the magnet comes apart with it. So we might need to remove it first. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, so the magnet is this really like big part. And I'm really not so sure if it's good if it's inside of your body that way because normally you should not um, get any magnet inside of your body but okay they will know what they do here um, and now it seems like it needs to be removed via soldering iron the rest and now let's try to 
Chaos Flyer. Yeah, that works out as well. So let's just cut away the battery because they will be just completely empty. Yeah, that looks good. So we now can also open up that part of the PCB. And let's take a look on the other side. Another chip which yeah, mentions L Y uh, L yeah Y two one five C and another chip next to it which is hard to read actually. I'm not so sure if the focus will work. Let's just zoom out completely. And normally this helps in getting more infos of a chip. Something like 630, more or less. Okay, so this LY chip seems to be like an, the image chip. The CC1310 is the RF chip. And this is also like sub gigahertz. So somewhere around 400 to 900 megahertz. And... Yeah, let's also open this PCB up and zoom in again to make it simpler. And yeah, let's also cut away the battery again. And that's a bit harder to reach. Also, it seems like there's another chip on the PCB, so I will do it a bit more carefully. Maybe let's bend it away first. But, yeah, not so easy to get in there. Just remove it, move it via brute force, and there we go. So we have two coin cell batteries. So it will most likely be somewhere around three, three volt or six volts. Not so sure. They are in series. And yeah, so now we have also this PCB again. And there's actually quite a lot on this PCB as well. Let's try to remove the metal part better. Yeah, that looks good. And now we can see even more. Like so. Okay, quite a lot inside actually. Like we have the LED and sensor part, we have the camera part, we have something like a power regulator, power PCB, and basically the brain with the camera controller, most likely, the um, Texas Instruments RF chip, and this extra chip, which is unknown right now, it could be like a memory chip, to save images so they can get uploaded later maybe it will record for a specific amount of time and only then will upload the images not so clear right now i will now yeah play a bit around with it off camera and we'll come back to it and show you what i maybe will be able to make out of it and this is really like small i mean you saw the camera itself before <laughs> see you later
short info. So after connecting power to it with the PPK, so we can see the current draw from it, it's like still in some kind of sleep mode. But the moment some light is shining onto this sensor, we can see the current draw goes up a bit. And this seems like it waits for some kind of activation pattern on the light sensor to work fully. And yeah, let's see if I can find something out or I can just power it up directly on the chip to dump the flash, hopefully. After playing around with it for a bit now, trying to access uh, the SWD interface and also the UART bootloader, it's unfortunately not uh, working out as hoped. The SWD interface is locked and the UART bootloader might not be enabled or the pinout is not found. I can see a bit of SBI communication between the CC and the other chip on the other side. Um, this other chip is also not really Google able, so nothing turns out after looking for it. The only thing that I can really see is after activating the CC microcontroller by powering it up once like so we can see the chip wakes up and basically yeah is every now and then active and what we else can see is that the led lights start to blink every now and then as well like so and this means it's basically turned on or activated right now but without knowing what really goes on inside of the CC, it's hard to guess where to go next. Um, so I think that's all. Still a nice teardown and nice to see a CC chip inside. Um, a custom firmware could be written anyway, but why if you have to open it up to access it? And yeah, hope you like the teardown anyway. Have a great day.